Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Tonight's episode of Drinking Bros is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Browse the web without being tracked or monitored. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros to protect yourself today. Hey, D'Anthony, you are up and at him and chipper as fuck today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that quarantine has really set in for you. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, to me, at, at this point, it's irritating. <laughs> I know. It's like, what the fuck, man? This is all unnecessary. I, I've, we've, the first day we moved into our combat outpost, COP is the acronym we use for it, which I don't think they use anymore because that was deemed offensive at some point. At any rate. Oh, God. Yeah. So uh, the first night we moved in there, we slept in pigeon shit. Mm -hmm. There's like the whole basement was full of rancid water. We were fine. Yeah. Come on, man. Everything's fine. Like, virus is a virus. It's fine. Like, that's, what it, I, that's what I said. This, this is all about natural selection at this point. Look, if you're one of those uh, fortunate enough mm -hmm. to be in one of these uh, categories that aren't really affected by this, then you win. Yeah. That's what winning is, motherfucker. You don't have to fucking, like, look, yeah, shake the loser's hand, but you don't have to, like, pay his bills. Yeah, exactly. Just let him die. Yeah. It's fine. Look, I had it. I beat it. I moved on with my life. Just, uh, you're a, saying you had I'm a I coronavirus I survivor. I don't know. I'm a coronavirus I, I, survivor, I am. I feel yeah. like uh, that's coronavirus stolen valor. No, no. Because you don't have a certificate. It's funny. I had this uh, conversation with uh, Adam uh, Kinzinger last night. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know the you know what the doctor said? He goes, look, man, you're not going to fucking die from this shit. I'm not wasting a goddamn test on you. Yeah. Literally. And he was just like, let's, let's save these for people who actually need them. That's the way I feel about all this shit. And uh, there was four of us who had all the exact symptoms, same time, same place, all that other bullshit three or four weeks ago, and I'm, I'm over it. Uh, I'm with you on this. Um, we're all going to be fine unless you're in that age range or you have a respiratory problem. Um, and it pisses me off because we had, oh, we have a fucking awesome guest today. Um, one of our favorites, John Brinkus um, from ESPN Sports Science. You'll know exactly who he is as soon as his voice pops up. He's one of the best. We were supposed to be with him. Friday at the Final Four in yep. Atlanta for March Madness, uh, doing this show live from Kill Cliff headquarters, and uh, we get fucked by all this stupid shit. I, uh, to say that I'm angry is uh, an understatement about mm -hmm. it. Um, either way, we had a, an awesome interview with him that is coming up right after the sponsors, and uh, we're going to get him back on the show because he's such a fucking cool guy, and we're going to do a complete... 100% conspiracy yep. theory episode, nothing about sports, <laughs> and uh, he's just one of the raddest dudes on the planet. We're going to do it Friday. Yeah, Friday. So yeah. it'll probably air Monday. Here's what next I think. Week. Yeah. Like if, let, let's say some new virus that attacked uh, sickle cell became a thing. We know that there's only a certain group of people that are susceptible to that, right? Yeah. Like that's just science. It's, it's how it works. We'll call, we'll call the virus pig tits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's say the pig tit virus mm -hmm. only affects people that are 65 and older, mm -hmm. just for example. Yeah. Uh, why quarantine everybody else? I don't, know. I don't know. Not saying that it only affects, coronavirus only affects older people. I mean, obviously, if you have a respiratory situation, if you've had cancer, if you have any kind of immunodeficiency at all, yeah, you need, we need to take extra steps when it comes to you. But society at large doesn't shut down for something that only kills 1% of people. I agree. Typically, that's the case. I agree. Right? Am I wrong about that? No, not at all. It's, it's like being at somebody else's birthday party, and they don't give you cake because it's not your birthday, too. And it's like, hey, motherfucker, yeah. we're all here. Uh, there's enough cake for everyone. Let me, yeah, have, I, let me I, have a fucking piece, and I'll I take think, my chances. I think Trump needs a change from America first to evolution first. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens, baby. I mean, that's what the that's what <laughs> life wanted to happen. Why? Like, it's like, who who goes out unless you <laughs> unless you're trying to do it to make a point or for for sport? Who the fuck or stay alive? Who's swimming upstream? Uh, no, go with the stream. The stream's going down. They're getting a boat and fucking float your fat ass down the river. Yeah, and we're, stop we're, trying we're not to fucking salmon. No, stop trying to ice skate uphill. It doesn't work. By the way, I hate people who pronounce it salmon. I don't know anyone that does that. I no, do. I would. Oof. Hurt. Half the shows my wife watches, good luck. They're all on there. My, my Filipino buddy Ralph says sa Salmon. Sometimes. Salmon, yeah. yeah. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I almost it. reached out and poked him one time, like just like jab in the but face. Worse. Like, come on, dude. Come on, bro. Can't do that. Anywho, uh, we're going we're gonna to call up John Brinkus here in a moment. 
And uh, right now we got some sponsors to pay for this whole fucking shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Big, big fan of ghost bed. Look, man, uh, you're not getting coronavirus with these guys. Their, their mattresses are sealed up. All this shit is in a box made in the USA and uh, shipped right to your fucking house. I feel like it would be an honor to get coronavirus from a famous person. Same. Like, for example, Idris Elba got coronavirus and it looks like he spread it to his wife, the Canadian prime minister's wife, but not the Canadian prime minister. I don't know how that worked. Deep dicking. Yeah. No, it's not an STD. I don't think. No, not at all. But if, you, if you're going to, you're, you're probably going to throw one or two, two pecks on the, on the beak. And I just, before you, Trudeau uh, seems like a cuck, right? Yeah. And if he's, if you're, if you're going to, if you're out there and I'm not judging him, by the way, some not people, at all. some people are into that. If you're into that, watch your wife get fucked on a ghost bed because it's the best bed out there. Exactly. L- let her get fucked in style. You don't yeah. want to see her get fucked on a motel six bed. No. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. 25% off mattresses. If you get a mattress, you get two free pillows. And the goddamn pillows are almost as great as the goddamn bed. Yeah, they're very thick. You could definitely murder somebody with those pillows. Yes, they're the best. You can snuff somebody out. Yeah. Um, and as always, they got the 36 month pay as you go program. No interest. No one on the interwebs is doing that. So you can take 25% off of everything and then boom, uh, pay as you go program. It's like 20 bucks a month, dude. If you're quarantined, quarantine in. Uh, in the best conditions possible at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got boxofawesome.com. Whew. They send you boxes of awesome things. They do. And, That's why and they call the company that. During the quarantine, uh, no lie, I don't tell me if you're like this. I wait by the door of like, oh, hey, is, <laughs> is the mailman going to bring me something awesome today? I feel like I'm in that fucking Kevin Costner movie about the postal service. Where it's just like, dude, Water- is he going to come? Waterworld? Yeah, no, the the postal one where he's, I think it's called like Postal. Post- Look up uh, Kevin Costner post, post office movie. Postman. Is it? Oh, it's Il, is it Il Postino? Something like it's that. The, Either way. The Postman. Um, is it just the Postman? Yeah, and it's basically, they just basically follow him around for three and a half hours while he delivers mail. Goddamn right. And that's what I feel like I'm doing. I'm I'm just waiting for my Postman to fucking drop off a box at my house. Box of Awesome came the other day, and it was it was like fucking Christmas, dude. Um, even my kids were jealous. They were just like, I didn't get anything. And I was like, you're not a fucking grown-up. Yeah, get a job, bitch. Yeah. Start to earn your keep around here. Bring a little bacon home before you start asking for packages. Uh, Anywho, at boxofawesome.com, you take a little five-question survey. They determine the type of man you are, and then they send you cool shit. I got to fucking hatch it, dude. What if you failed the survey? And they sent you over to the women's section. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, but you're a bitch. You're a bitch. (laughs) I'm going to send you little bitch items. Because they do have a female section now. And there's dope shit over there, too. It's the best. So every every month they just send you something cool. You don't know what it is. It could be a whiskey decanter. It could be uh, you know a box mm-hmm. of heroin. Whatever it is, it's it's great. Um, I, I love boxofawesome.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you twenty percent off. Usually this this shit they send you in that box is like worth over I don't know, 150, 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. It's you're getting it for like forty <laughs> bucks there, forty five. I think it's a minimum seventy five dollar value. Oh, it's great. I love boxofawesome.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for twenty percent off. Twenty twin. I just got a subscription. So that shit just comes once a month, dude. Mm. Uh, I love it. Last but not least, who we got, Anthony? Uh, well, we got two actually. Postmates Ooh. is one. Postmates, and then Killcliff, which we we'll get into with John Brinkus here a little bit because he's now just I don't know if we're he's public. doing a lot of stuff with they, Killcliffe. They already, yeah, they already put out a press release on this, but he's the new chief branding officer at Killcliffe, which yeah. I believe is still what Matt does at Black Rifle, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe he's this executive vice president. Now. I, don't I don't know. I don't know what it's, what's going on over there. Uh, I've never pretended uh, to be a doctor, rate, and I'm not now. At any rate, yeah, Brinkus works for uh, Killcliffe now. No, he does. Great. Yeah. Oh, look, Killcliffe's our favorite. Uh, KillcliffeCBD.com uh, is, is the best in the business. And uh, the promo code is Drinking Bros for 30% off and free shipping. So all that shit comes to you for free. And, uh, man, it, it's the best, dude. I, I drink it all the time. We get into it a little bit with Brinkus here mm-hmm. in, a, in a few, but uh, – uh, I love it. I drink a can of it every single night. And now I just drink it on the way home from work. I used to drink it on the way home from the gym. Uh, there's no gym anymore, so we're going to continue to get fatter, but at least uh, it's it's more tolerable to hang out with people, or your family, I should say, with some CBD. 25 milligrams in every can. You will not piss hot uh, for anything else, man. Uh, they got it dialed in. This is the only brand you can trust as far as drinkables. Go to killcliffcbd.com. 
uh, enter the promo code Drinking Bros for 30% off and free shipping. And then Postmates, man. Postmates has been our fucking jam forever. We use them in real life. Uh, they the, did a, when, last year when we were in L.A. to shoot all those episodes, um, the first thing I did when we arrived at our Airbnb was buy like $300 worth of fucking liquor mm -hmm. on Postmates. And it was there in like 25 minutes. It's great. You can get liquor, condoms, yeah. fucking uh, you know, a, a, a Japanese ring. Do whatever you can get anything you want there on Postmates. I'm just look. I'm just amped. We have a promo code for it. So if you've never used Postmates before, uh, Drinking Bros is the uh, promo code that gets you free delivery fees. That is a big deal um, because usually you know fees jack up on that shit. Now you're just paying stock standard price. It's mm -hmm. as if you were driving through Taco Bell, which is fucking rad. Um, with promo code Drink It Bros, you can have somebody else drop it off. Yeah, with, without having to make eye contact with a poor person at all. You never do. You never have to now. Yeah. So uh, that should be their new slogan. Dan, never make <laughs> eye contact with a poor person we, again. We, we hide poor people behind this. Yep. This this building behind here. a yeah. nice Honda Prius. Yep. That's Is it a Toyota Prius or Honda Prius? Eh, whatever. Either way, it doesn't go to matter. Postmates. Uh, promo code Drinker Bros. Free delivery fees. Do it. Uh, if you've already used up your free delivery fees, just sign in under another account. Nobody's yeah. going to know. Another email. I uh, probably should definitely not be saying that, but I am. Uh, kids, we have no sports. Um, this is going to be the greatest show of our lives. And uh, it still ended up being an awesome fucking show. Yeah, it was great. He's the best. And he's going to come back. And uh, we're going to try to do the interview Friday to air Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. on Conspiracy Theories. I was unaware of, of how DP is into that, but oh, yeah, he produced all those shows for sci-fi, so yeah. it makes sense. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, here we go, kids. Here is ESPN Sports Science John Brankus. Yes, John Brankus. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. How are oh, you, my buddy? God. I, I am so good and so excited. I, I, I cannot contain myself. I know, mm. right? You get a you get a fancy new Kill Cliffs, uh, what is that, a long sleeve tee they got there now? This is a, this is a long sleeve tee. Look at this thing. Damn yeah, it, man. Kill Cliff. Look at that. It's like I'm a superhero. Yeah, we're huh? look, we're obviously sponsored by Kill Cliff, so we're huge right. KillCliffCBD.com fans. Promo code Drinking Bros, 30% off and free shipping with that. Are you a big CBD guy? I am. Same. You know, I, do you want to know what? Here's, here's the honest to God truth. I have never smoked pot a day in my life. Mm -hmm. I've never had anything to do with THC. Yeah, and I'm either. a huge CBD fan. I've never and would never uh, do Dan that. would never right. do that unless we're on air every single day. Uh, Listen, Dan, <laughs> not a big deal. Yeah. he's in the running with, with uh, Joey Diaz as far as smoking weed on air it's, every day. It's me, him, and Mike Tyson. Y yeah, yeah, Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. Mike Tyson gets Dude, real high. We're in a war right now to see who can smoke the most weed on stage. Yeah. Joe, That's Joe, right. Joey's That's got right. us in body mass, though. I don't think I could compete with that guy. No, no, I, I doubt it. The, the one time I met Mike Tyson, he shook my hand for five minutes. He was so stoned right. that I right. didn't. It's still Mike Tyson, so I wasn't going to pull my arm away. And I just had right. to keep smiling like I, I'm just that like a so scared funny. white guy. And I, I was just like, he's I, one of those guys that when he shakes do. your hand, he's scanning the room while he's doing it. Yeah. And he gets lost in thought. You know what I mean? <laughs> After uh, after the ear biting incident, I was at the NBA All Star Game in New York, and I was shooting a movie, and we was doing cameos with all the celebrities who were there. Uh -huh. I literally in in succession, I shot cameos with Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, and Donald Trump. No <laughs> way! I'm not kidding. They were all next to each other. How was, I'm like I still have the tape? What it's was amazing. your experience with Trump? Trump was unbelievable because I had uh, I I actually I did Tyson. Uh -huh. And, you know, theoretically, when you're shooting a movie, you want to get a release to make sure you could use name like like this and image and yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And Tyson's like, I've never signed anything in my entire life. I'm not signed it. So I was like, <laughs> OK, so I move on to Evander Holyfield and his lawyer is standing next to him Oof. and I hand him the release and he just signs it. So I go <clears> up to <throat> Donald Trump and I'm like, hey, Evander Holyfield's lawyer just signed this. You know, can you sign this release? And he just signed it. I have a signed release. From Donald Trump with a cameo in a movie I made. That's great. That's great. I, look, I've met him a couple times. He's a great guy. He's fucking awesome. I, I don't have a I bad mean, word to say about him. I feel like Mike I, Tyson's the kind of guy that doesn't sue people. No. He doesn't. Like, he sues with his fists. Mike my, my Tyson, though, like, I just, you don't know. Like, when you're around him, you don't know whether you're, whether you're like, man, at any moment. He's I like mean, a he, pit bull. He can chew your child's yes, face off. Exactly. Second. Yeah, I got Where it. Where it's yeah. like everybody right. says they're they're friendly and polite until that one day they fucking snap and 
There goes your Achilles and your child's hopes and dreams. You well, know? I mean, that'd be a good story, though. We're all going to die. I if, think you, so. if you died at the hands of Mike Tyson under some weird circumstances, that would be better than just having a heart attack or something. Yeah, yeah. Now, Evander's a little punchy. Was he punchy back then or was he with it? He was He was actually pretty with it. I, uh, I actually was developing a project with him, mm-hmm. and I asked him. I said flat out. I said, why were you able to dominate Tyson like you did? I mean, everybody who stepped in the ring was petrified of Tyson prior to you. And he said – this is what he told me. He said – I watched the tape of every single fighter getting knocked out by Mike Tyson and every single fighter got back up. So I figured he can't hit any harder than I've been hit. That was his attitude going, I mean, a hundred percent. He's like, no one's ever died from it. So what do I have to fear? And when you watch that, he walks right up to him. Like he's not even scared. Yeah. That's pretty intense. That is pretty pretty intense. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, look, I will explain to the audience. Um, we were originally all supposed to be together this Friday uh, doing an MLB preview yep. show yeah, in Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia, yep. um, by the Killcliffe headquarters. And then we were all going to go to the Final yep. Four uh, the next day and, and be on with our merry sports selves during the middle of March Madness and have the greatest time of our lives. Instead, everybody's in quarantine. We've got a skeleton crew at our studio. You're calling in from – are you at home right now or – I, I actually am in Virginia, Park City, and I could just smell in the air that cities were going to start closing. So I decided to uh, hightail it back to Virginia to be with my mom. Mm. Oh, you're kidding. Wow, that's <laughs> unbelievably no, smart. Yeah, I'm yeah. Lit- I'm, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to get locked out of seeing my family soon. So I need, right. to, I need to get back home. So I'm in, I'm in Virginia right now, which is now locked down until June 10th. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the same with our co-host. So he was here and he was like – he got on a flight at 6 a.m. You get a call from, we had a congressman on the week before. And he goes, hey, man, they're about to lock everything down. I've got to go back to see my family. I'm not going to get back. He left all the <laughs> lights on. He left all his clothes at my house, like everything, and just hopped on a flight. And I was like, shit, how bad is this? Yeah. And then sure enough, he, he was right. You were right. And here we are, uh, all, yeah. pa- all patched in together. It was crazy. We, I, I, was doing, um, I was doing a Sirius XM show on Saturday in L.A. 15 days ago. And I was I made it from the 101 405 interchange to LAX in 14 minutes. No way. And I'm like, <laughs> there's something wrong. Either I just went through like a wormhole, yeah. or they're about to shut this place down. So I called my wife uh, literally from the airport in LAX. I said, I think we just have to leave wherever we are and go back to where my family is because I think everything is about to shut down. So it was like a wow. it was a really weird feeling. That's strange, yeah, because that, that commute you're talking about is an easy 50 oh. minutes at best. Oh, easy. Easy. Right? I'm like, I, I got there 14 minutes with a bad Uber driver. Oh. <laughs> so so like, you, you know it could have been quicker, too, you know? Oh, could have, dude, we could have made it in like 12. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, so let's start with this. It, it, NBA is canceled, you think, for the year? You think they're all done, right? You know, I think the NBA, this is what I think is going to happen. I think the NBA is going to figure out somehow, some way to have playoffs and some sort of abridged. I, I don't know if they come back for the regular season. I think they'll do playoffs even if it's not in front of an audience. I just think they that the world is crying to be entertained. Yes. And the NBA still has so much time left on their clock. Players are healthy. They're like, look, you know, we might as well do it. That's what I think is going to happen, even if they don't do it with a crowd. Well, so the weird thing for me is usually the the NBA season ends in June, right? If if we're able to make this, because like Virginia is shut down until June 10th. Usually the NBA season, the finals are over in the middle of June. Right. Then there's a very, in my opinion, a very quick turnaround for basketball players with an 82-game schedule that they're, they're playing in October now. So you're right. looking at three months later, uh, essentially, and then and then the draft, right? You got three and a half months, and then you have the draft right after that. Usually after the what a week after the the final NBA Finals game. To yep. me, that's too quick of a turnaround. I saw Adam Silver speaking on uh, ESPN the other night, and he was like, "Nah, to say that we'd be back by the end of May would be a stretch." Well, then how right. how would you do that, knowing how long <laughs> a playoff season is for the NBA? Because, you know, those last two series are seven games. Uh, I know the first one is is five, but you still got three right. series and then a, a seven game. 
that's at least two and a half months unless you're going every other night. And you would be putting a lot of stress on those players going back totally. and forth. There's no way you could play four rounds of seven games. Yeah, they, they, they'll they they'll have to abridge it some way, but <laughs> they've got a tough choice to make. I think that everybody, in terms of looking at the market right now, they're like, if we punt all together, mm-hmm. I mean, NBA 2K is going to, I mean, has already taken over the NBA, but they're like, we got to do something. And you can bet Even on it. You can bet yeah. on it. Uh, one of our you sponsors, can, you can bet on yeah. on mybookie.com. Uh, you can bet on NBA 2K games. Uh, Dan was betting on the Lakers game the other night. It was mm-hmm. spread. Think about how visionary the NBA was to create their own e-league. Yep. Right where <clears> I mean it's unbelievable and everybody's watching it and playing it. I think that the I think that the NBA that I mean they'll do a consolation game or something mm-hmm. because punting all together is I mean that has massive ramifications so I think that they're just going to at least appease people and say hey we're going to try to just like they did a you know some living room game they I think they'll they'll figure out somehow some way they'll have you know they'll declare it an essential service of some kind okay and say god you know we got to play one game just to bring people together that's I mean I hope something like that happens mm-hmm. I mean maybe maybe it doesn't but it feels like they do have time they have to like mid July to like put on something. It, it won't be four rounds, but it might be one round. I mean, what, just, what if they just know. went with uh, uh NCAA like, style, like a, a March madness style, one, one and done tournament. Yeah. I wow. Think, because I, that would hey, be a the, blast to the, watch. The, the, I've never heard that, that, uh, that proposed. The NBA is one of the few leagues. Actually, baseball is the, the one that happens most commonly where wildcard teams win mm-hmm. titles. I think it's happened five times in the last 20 years yeah. in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Most sports, it does not happen very frequently. So the NBA, it's only happened a lower wildcard team. The lowest seed to ever win was the Rockets in 95, 96. I think they were six seed. Mm-hmm. But there were reasons they were number six seed beyond the talent of the team. And also, it's the first time it's ever happened in NBA history. Right. So I feel like... um that would shake things up a little bit because usually when I mean, you when you look it at, would be fun you, man when you look at two I like teams, this idea when you look at two teams you can in the NBA especially you can pretty much tell who's going to win that series mm-hmm. I think unless something aberrant happens I I like the idea of potentially doing the basketball tournament format mm-hmm. with the All Star teams again because that fourth quarter Ooh. was out of control it, it, imagine it, everything you know? adam silver touches seems to turn to gold for that guy including the esports like you were talking about totally. I, I would love to see that format as well both of these would be great maybe at a neutral site where you could control them with you know doctors and and covid tests and all that stuff because yeah. right now they've got those brain guns it looks like they're just kind of scanning people for <laughs> right. fevers like it's, That's there's a, one right. down the street it, from our it's office called a, it's called a temporal scanner yeah, uh, whatever. I I only take my my temperature rectally, so you know whatever they're doing, <laughs> cool. I'm I mean, still gonna I, it, still gonna yeah, spread those I'll, cheeks. I'll send you a link and show you there are other ways to take your temperature, but you know, no need. You can just st- stick with the stick with the tried and true. I'll do it as as God intended. I believe that was in the Bible. You um, can go through your dick hole too. A lot of people don't know that. No, you, you no, yeah. you, you don't. Uh, I'm so my prediction is this: I, we got you, we got you guys. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's a no go on NBA. <laughs> I think they're going to be Altogether. too afraid. Yes, um, right. I, I got some sort of modified format, even if it's like TBT All Star Game. Okay. Um, what about uh, Major League Baseball? I think they're in a much. I think they're in a, a a tough tough spot because, first of all, they're, they're clearly not starting on time. Second no. of all, the, second of all, I mean, can you think of a sport? where their attendance was already really low, mm-hmm. right? And w- in given the fact that people watching baseball on TV, those numbers aren't good either. No. They're they're in a they're in a tough spot where how do you abbreviate a season? It would, it's going to be abbreviated no matter what. But how do you abbreviate it? Keep your loyal fan base, mm-hmm. attract new, you know, new uh, a, a new audience mm-hmm. and still feel legitimate. I think they're in I think they're in a in in a bit of a pickle because they're not going to make their you know loyal fans happy they're not going to recruit new fans it's going to be some kind of mishmash something if they do anything right um i don't know i i, I don't have an, a, an answer on that at all i don't know what they do well, so they, what, they got to get clever soon they, they got to they, they, yeah. they gotta do something and they've tried they got to do something more in the digital space they've tried with you you're you're yeah. a good example of them trying to yeah give people more to watch in a baseball game. The, if, if For those of you who don't know, John Briggs is the host of Sports Science and mm-hmm. ESPN. 
Um, I feel like if you if you were a sports fan, you don't know who John is. Like that voice is so recognizable. Yeah. Of like every time I hear your voice, I picture every tendon inside a calf muscle like flexing up, and I'm like, I know I know more about the human body and athletes because of you. And it's there like, right. yeah, as soon as you hear the voice, but they've you know. tried to do that. All the fan track stuff that's on broadcast on mm-hmm. Fox and ESPN yeah. now, they're trying to get people more interested, but it's not a, it's not enough. You know what I mean? No, yeah. the the rumor I've heard is uh, July fifteenth, seventy five game season, which is uh, half. And what they're hoping, um, I should say, is that uh, with, with seventy five games, it really puts the pressure on you instead of one sixty two to win every right. single night. Whereas that urgency isn't there every single night for a hundred and sixty two game schedule. Um, right. And I would be fine with that. They're also looking at neutral sites uh, to, as to where to put it. Mm. So we'll see what happens with that as far as a neutral site goes. Um, I don't know where that would be. I, you know, I, I think it's tough. I think it's a it's a it's a really it's a tough. They're in a tough spot. I think they're in a tougher spot than the NBA because I think the NBA can. I agree. You yeah. know, satisfy their audience and and grow a new audience with their e league, and mm-hmm. I think they they're in a better spot than MLB because I mean baseball games are slow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I don't think people are like, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to sit around and watch a baseball game right now. Well, you know what? Like, you know what I really enjoyed during spring training. I'm a, I'm a Brave. We're both Braves fans, actually. Uh, yeah, they mic'd up Freddie Freeman and at least one other person from the team for pretty much every game they did in spring training. <laughs> yeah, and it was right. way more entertaining. Like I'm entertained by baseball, anyways, because I'm a fucking nerd. You know what I mean? I enjoy right. the physics behind it. I'm just, I'm geeked out watching the show. But uh, this brought another element to it that like we we put it out to our fans they were huge fans of that as well yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you a fix for major league baseball that just popped in my mind we did an episode on wiffle ball and there actually is a professional wiffle ball league yes and it is it is on we had the greatest wiffle ball pitcher of all time in the lab Mm -hmm. dude has more perfect games than he can than he can possibly pick yeah we had james loney up to bat mm-hmm. he couldn't even come he didn't come within two feet of hitting the ball <laughs> like it was amazing i mean watching wiffle ball would be that'd be pretty fun i, like, I just like yeah you're you're speaking my language now I, I happen to have made the only wiffle ball movie ever made um so <laughs> it's about the greatest wiffle ball player of all time and i i love wiffle ball and it's a blast right. um yep. i don't know that people would that, that's that's more of an espn ocho sport I don't know. You like think about it. If I were to announce right now, uh-huh. if I were to say we have the greatest baseball players of all time lining up to play wiffle ball against the current wiffle ball world champions, <laughs> you, you would turn in. You tune in, in a second. You'd be like, I, I, I mean, I want to see that. Yeah, It'd be amazing. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's true. And and right now, like any form of sports, like I'm Jones and Ford, like that UFC fight that's coming up on April 18th. Dana White says it's still on. However, Khabib said he is stuck in Russia and will not be able to attend that fight because Russia is going to be on lockdown. So right. they said they're currently looking for a new fighter for Ferguson to go against. I hope Street Jesus came out, uh, Masvidal, and said, hey, I am free the 18th and I would love to fight. Um, right. I think, because Dan and I were talking about this off air, I think that might be one of the highest pay-per-view events of all time, no matter who they get, just yeah. simply because there has not been sports for almost a month at this point. Right, especially if they... You know, if you think about it, if they were, they were to do a discount price, they were to say, hey, you can buy it for 20 bucks. Mm, yeah. You know, like you would get, you'd probably get 10 million people to be like, God, just give me something to watch. Something, mm-hmm. I know. Just something. <laughs> like, I don't even, I don't know who this is, but sure. I told Dan, go. this will be the first time I ever sit through all 86 undercards uh, with complete right. enjoyment because I have nothing else going on. Yeah. Sports wise exactly. at all. <laughs> exactly. Um, who who was your picks this year for, for Major League Baseball? If if it does get played, who were your you favorites know, this year? In a truncated season. Yeah, and anybody, in a truncated oh season. Anybody yeah. that has a fucking really good top of the rotation is gonna be better than anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, the only team that I think is guaranteed ratings in this season are the Astros. <laughs> they're the only ones who people are guaranteed to watch. Do you think it's going to be like uh, 2003 when every Barry Bonds at bat got broadcast and they're just going to broadcast every time an Astros hitter gets hit in the head <laughs> with a fastball? <laughs> every time. Breaking news. It's just going to be a constant stream. I'm surprised. It's going to be like 
there wasn't some kind of legislation from major. I guess they didn't have time because of this whole quarantine thing. But I thought they would do something about that during spring training. Yeah, like uh, even it, if it wasn't really an issue, just make a proclamation because it, why not? Yeah, get get ahead just, of it. It's so funny when that when that story broke. <laughs> I said, which is the more shocking headline? Is the shocking headline the Houston Astros stole signs successfully, or is the shocking headline the Houston Astros? didn't even try to steal signs yeah like, I, I you'd mean, be like what i know i know so, i it, it, and so that's fun. another added problem for baseball is the astros is like look you're already going through the worst scandal and arguably the history of the sports uh the sport itself next to steroids yeah. i guess but even steroids <laughs> people were just bombing home runs like i'm fine with that you know stealing right. signs and winning world series when you probably shouldn't have is a much bigger deal than steroids in my opinion now you're going to add that to the... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I... A truncated season? If, if it's available to you to use and you don't use it. Eh, so is what you, spyware, though. I mean, you could spy on anyone if you wanted to. Like, yeah. you know, it's not... Dude, I think, I think Major, I, I said uh, the fix for sign stealing is for the new protocol in calling a pitch to be for the pitcher to tell the batter what he's going to throw. Well, you know, I'm throwing you a fastball. And then he doesn't know if you're telling him the yeah. truth or not. Yeah. Uh, catchers like, used to do, comes. catchers <laughs> used to do that to Tony Gwen all the time. Cause he would just rate yeah. everything they threw. So they would, there's this, I can't remember who it was, uh, but some, this one catcher specifically, I think uh, from the Astros, maybe uh, would always tell him what's coming. Yeah. Like just and, and because the, he's going to hit a it derogatory anyways. way. Yeah. He's yeah like, well, yeah. I like the idea of saying, you know, you missed that last curveball so badly, we're going to throw you another one. <laughs> yeah, and we we had <laughs> like, Pete Rose on about what a month and a half ago, two months two ago, months ago yeah. and uh, he said he hated it. He said there was a couple catchers that told him what the yeah. what was coming, and he goes, I, f- I hated it because it fucked with my head so bad, I, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, you don't want to know, and that that that's <laughs> that's what's funny about the sign stealing thing is, I mean that that's where I have f- far less of a you know crazy objection to it because. I don't think it's necessarily an advantage. I think it could be a disadvantage to some mm. guys, an advantage to others. You still have to hit the ball. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's not like it's it, it makes the ball bigger. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's get into NCAA and NFL. Um, do you yeah. think the NCAA and uh, you think they'll have a season? I have not heard one word about college football out of anybody's mouths thus far, nor any plans to say, yes, we are playing, or no, we're not playing. It's just, it's been dead. Whereas the NFL seems like business as usual. Yeah, NFL is saying party on, you know, we're having a season, we're doing the draft, we're, you know, we'll have OTAs, and it's very strange. You know, it's, they're reporting it, and, and even when you read any of the articles on whether or not it's NFL.com or ESPN.com, mm-hmm. there is no, like, caveat language of, well, we'll see how things work out. It's just, we're moving forward. Yeah. So, they're the only league that's taking kind of this very proactive stance and not caveating everything, but NCAA football, I mean, first schools have to be open. Yes. So it's like, we have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, then I think they can address it. So I haven't heard, you know, word one about anything to do with college, but you know, the NFL is having a party on mm-hmm. attitude. I wonder if let's say the college season gets canceled. Obviously you still retain your year of eligibility. Because you didn't play, yes. Right? If you're a, if you're a student athlete, but uh, what about people who are excellent football players who were expecting to leave and go to the NFL at 21 mm-hmm. or 20 right. or whatever the case is? I, I think like, they probably will be allowed to leave um, if they don't have an NCAA season this year as a sophomore. Yes, after, after your sophomore, uh, yeah, after, season, after yeah. your sophomore, year, as long as you're mm-hmm. 19 and you meet that protocol or whatever that yeah. that rule is, 20, I think it is. Um, I think they'll probably let them play. The problem is. There is a lot of guys who need this season to show what they have and move up the draft positions. Right now, I think the top two are solidified. It's probably going to be Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields at at onesie-twosie there. It would suck for somebody like me who is a gigantic Ohio State fan that I would not get to see my quarterback potentially win a national championship and then he leaves to go to the NFL and then you're starting over with a new set of guys for the next year. Man, that would just... uh, it would throw a wrench in everything for the next two years. It, you know, it, it, it really would. What I'm excited to see, and I think as we all sort of take a step back and say, okay, how does this play out in society? If you think about it, 
the NBA canceling its season was the first big domino to fall. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that fell, everyone else caved and everyone was like, well, if the NBA is caving. So I think that sports in a lot of way, in a lot of ways are going to define how we all interact moving forward. So whether or not it's the NFL or the NBA or major league baseball, somebody has to set a cultural norm and, you know, as soon as maybe it's college football, I don't know, because, you know, today, right now, you're like, what does the big house look like on, you know, opening day? You know what I mean? Are there going to be a hundred thousand people shoulder to shoulder (laughs) packed in? You know, it's like, God, today you can't uh, visualize that. But if college football is able to say, you know what, we're, we are going to just move forward and we're going to have these games and, you know, some people are going to get the flu and some people will get COVID and some people will get a cold, but we'll, we'll accept that. If they lead with that, then I think, you know, sport, just like the NBA um, really caught, you know, was the first domino to fall. That could be the first way of reopening things back up and trying to get back to a sense mm-hmm. of being normal. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like uh 9 it was yeah. it was comedians and fucking sports. Yeah, Base, baseball, Center Live was the baseball, first to, yeah. to come back as do far you, as television. Yeah. Do you remember the first basketball game opening night post nine eleven? Oh yeah, it was it was eerie. Yeah, it, it was, was Michael Jordan yeah. for the Washington Wizards was, yeah. against the New York Knicks in Madison yeah. Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it, it, it was, was eerie in the sense of like. I, we, I don't know about you, but I was home for you know seven or eight days. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. Everything yeah. was closed down. We had kind of all, all of us friends had huddled up at one place, you know, every single night and whatever. And then right. when things got back to normal, it was like, uh, something gonna happen here. And then life went back to normal after that game. It, you, you were right. Yeah. Like it just went back to normal, and it it helps. Sports help a lot, and I hope it does. Um, but this is something different than a terrorist attack. This is a disease and a pandemic that you can't see. And with college in particular, especially football, right? You look at the amount of, like I go to the grocery store and I look at how they wipe every single inch down head to toe before they give you a basket or or whatever. Football pads and, you know, uniforms and all that stuff. There is so much fabric and equipment that you've got to put on that, that could possibly somebody have coughed on or how do you clean totally. that enough? How do you, you know, sweat there's, that out of your no system? There's no cleaning or... it enough, man. I mean, look, we're, we, we, we hear the word virus and we freak out because we've seen so many movies. And look, a virus can be dangerous. AIDS is a good example of that. Yeah, and you've had AIDS twice. Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> and so, beat it. Yeah. Uh, and you just beat it with just, vitamin C. Yeah. Well, it was mostly yeah. essential oils and willpower, to be honest. Yeah. That's and, right. And, uh, <laughs> and also, uh, like a lot, a lot of people don't know, if you win a gold medal yeah. at the Olympics, you beat AIDS. Uh, yeah. Magic Johnson and Greg Louganis. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, You're talking about beating AIDS. Be- beating with AIDS. Essential oils. Oh yeah, the, with the with the virus thing. Look, I mean, it's it's this is the new norm. We, I feel like it's escalated pretty much every election year for the last ten years now. Mm-hmm. There's been some kind of virus, SARS or or Ebola or something. HVN one. Yep. H one N one. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Swine flu. Yeah. No. Uh, so there's been some kind of virus every two years or so for the last decade. Like this is it just is what it is, and this stuff has happened before. We human beings are so goddamn stupid. We think that something is uh, special because it's happening to us. Like this shit's been going on forever. Just shut the fuck forever, up. Forever, right? yeah. I mean, I, I, and like, I don't. And we'll deal with it. Exactly. Like old people and sick people will die. Sometimes young people will die. Yeah. And that's just how it is, man. What the fuck are you gonna do about it? So yeah. How how hard is this? Stay away from old people. Take care of them. Make sure what they're getting is like it, whomever is at risk. It doesn't. I'm just saying, old people in this case is, are, is an example. Yeah, we did take. You, yeah, do you, did you guys see what Sweden? Uh, Sweden just announced today what their restrictions were. No, they I didn't said, see it. Yeah, they said no restrictions. You know, you know, if you don't want to get sick, don't leave your house. That's the way it should be, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, t- I took a like, lot whatever. of heat from that on my other show for saying that, Fuck and I was that. like, "Hey, man, at this point, you know what the age range is." Uh, you know, if you have respiratory problems and all that other stuff, like otherwise you're probably looking at a three day flu slash cold. Some people are less and, yeah. uh, you know, get it, move on with your life and, yeah. and be done with it. Yeah. And, and i like this idea that somehow certain jobs have been uh, deemed essential and other ones aren't like my, my friends that are single parents that have 
two children and, and work a job or two sometimes, mm -hmm. both of those jobs are essential. Otherwise, they wouldn't be working those fucking jobs. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know I mean? wow. yeah. And that 1200 bucks isn't coming for three weeks at a minimum. Right? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, right. I don't know what we expect these people to do. You can get fucked with all this stupid quarantine bullshit. Yeah, what do they do with the salaries, by the way, John? Do you know that? True. For the NBA and, and all these guys, I mean, are, major, they, are they keeping baseball them? Is playing or? their minor league players until <laughs> mid May or some shit, I think. Or I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think you know what's what's interesting is going to be the NFL is going to be the interesting one because the NFL does not pay its players any other time of the year other than during the season. Correct. They don't even get paid in preseason. Yep. So they get sixteen checks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the party on attitude that they're having right now is kind of a no lose, you know, like, sure, come work out, get ready. <laughs> you know, like we're not paying you right the second. So very few guaranteed contracts. And, you know, if the season doesn't happen, well, it doesn't happen. Didn't cost us anything. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're in a different position than the NBA because they're not writing 82 checks. Yeah. Well, the, they're, NBA, they're, the NBA's insurance on – on salaries way different than the NFL is too. The NFL is, is like their, their salaries are insured. Not much like the, not much. the NBA. Like for example, if uh, Kevin Durant would have stayed with the Warriors last year, uh -huh. um, he would have, uh, I think something like 60% of his salary would have been written off to the insurance right. company or something like that. I don't remember what it is, but it's a huge chunk of it. Sure. And they're, uh, they're that's, definitely... go ahead. that's, that's not the case with the NFL. So I don't know what they're going to do. Tell everybody to get fucked. I mean, I guess they could. But yeah. What are you gonna do? That's kind of the whole they have, point. Uh, there's gonna be there's gonna be a, a very difficult insurance issue because I actually know there you know all the most of the players in uh, NFL NBA um, get insurance mm -hmm. against their uh, contracts just in case something crazy happens. I don't know if you know something like this was ever written in or how how it would be litigated or who yeah. would decide what. But, you know, if the NFL doesn't play and guys have insurance on their contracts and they try to make insurance claims, that insurance company is going to be hurt. And I don't, I don't know what well, it, this, it's, it's, it's kind of like that same thing it's happens something that we've never contemplated. Yeah. No. That same thing happens every time there's a, there's a hurricane or something. Right. So in yeah. coastal cities, like the one we live in and in, in Wilmington, a bunch of shit gets fucked up. Everybody files insurance claims in the same place, and anybody that's not a major nationwide or international company gets shut down, basically. They, and they, get, right. they, they go bankrupt. Yeah. And, and it happened to me during hur sold. Hurricane Sandy. I lost a house in uh, New Jersey. I had a mom-and-pop right. insurance agency on the island. I've had it for you know years and years and years, been in the family forever. Finally have the big one, and then they're pulling everything out like it's boi the end of Boiler Room. You know They've got right. the papers all up in boxes and go bankrupt, and it's like, Hey guys, what what happened what? to the insurance money I've been paying you for you know twenty years? And they're exactly. like, sorry. sorry, sorry about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, better yeah. luck next time. Was guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. FEMA will help you. No. Yeah, Do you exactly. think there's ever any circumstance where the NFL guarantees their contracts? Like, is that even a thing? I I I, I, no. I feel like the the most recent. Uh, deliberation over their their contract was they it didn't really go well for the players in my opinion no and it was like 48 no. hours yeah. uh, and it was just like no. hey guys did you not want to fight for the one thing that you really need in this life which is a guaranteed contract same as every other league has except for yours that that those negotiations that were i mean it, it did not favor the players it, the negotiations went like this hey owners we want 16 games and we want it to be guaranteed and they said gosh that's a really interesting proposal. How about we have 17 games and no guarantee? They said, okay. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> essentially like, how it was. How is that a good deal? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I think I personally think that Roger Goodell is the worst commissioner in modern sports history. I think he's terrible at his job. Like he's depending he's, on which side you're sitting on. Yeah, you're on the side of the owners. For the owners, you're like, greatest God, commissioner of all time. Amazing. I'm on the I'm on the <laughs> side I'm on the side of the fans where this guy let politics dominate the storyline of an athletic organization for three years. Uh, yeah, I mean, because he didn't like you didn't dude. hear this shit out of the NBA. Adam Silver right. was all over it. He was like, "Look, you guys aren't going to do that shit on on the court, but let's spend millions of dollars helping these communities that you're worried about in exchange for that." Right. That's exactly totally. what the, that's the whole point of kneeling on the field, for example, is to raise awareness and get money and fix the problem. If, if that's yeah. what you truly believe, it's the, to fix the problem. All Goodell had to say was, this is, this is not a good look. Here's a bunch yeah. of money because we don't pay taxes and we profit about $15 billion a year. Here's a little bit of money to yeah. help, help these poor children. And that would have been, <laughs> been the fucking end of it. Yeah. 
Right. God I agree with it, you a hundred percent. How do you let that narrative get away from you? I mean, I you had, you had a guy kneeling. If you're the commissioner, you go, Colin, what, what is it that you want? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. He's like, well, I want equality. Okay, here's ten million dollars to go donate to whoever you want to. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the story ends there, and we look good. It was it was uh, strange. And, was and and look, you you went through it at ESPN because there was a there was a good couple years there with Jamil Hill and those guys where it it seemed where Sports Center had turned political in, in an odd way. Yeah. And I don't know if yeah. that was the network's choice or the individual anchor's choice, and the network couldn't say anything to them. No, it was a combination of it was a combination of. <laughs> People, you know, it was literally like having an adolescent, right? Like mm. they, can they take the car to drive to the store? Now can they go drive cross state lines? Can they drive a little bit farther? Like they were just getting away with a little more and a little more and it got out of hand. Um, so then they had to just try to, you know, shut it down altogether and say, hey, you can't talk about it at all. Mm. But part of the fun <laughs> was, you know, intertwining the two, but not to a level where it was polarizing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where somebody like Colin Cowherd was, you know, so brilliant and is so brilliant that he's able to tie in all these sort of everyday topics with sports and see how they sort of co-mingle. It's, you know, it, uh, that, that's what made it fun. But yeah, right. he, once you get too political, yeah. you know, then it turns people off altogether. Well, sport, yeah. sports is something that's so ubiquitous that it is a, it, it's a, a central point where people come to enjoy themselves, but they also discuss ideas, right? Because different cultures are coming together. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, yeah. no, it's no different than, the, that's why in the military we have these very frank, conversations that would be extremely offensive to anybody that's not a part of that conversation right Right. but it's like all that stuff kind of melts away a little bit like you could see i guarantee you if there was a super racist uh fan of a football team next to a black football player right yeah and that football player won his team the game they're gonna high five and oh yeah no one percent no one gives two fuck two fucks about race or religion look at or alabama shit. fans yeah <laughs> for for a few you know? minutes for a few minutes yeah. nobody cares about all the all that other bullshit and that is the power of any anything that attracts enough attention to to like the goddamn roman coliseum having people fight to the death took their minds off of their differences their poverty all that shit that's what sports is yeah right do you do you guys see something happening which is interesting with this whole COVID thing is there seemed to me there seems to me to be sort of two different schools of thought there's the look this is just a virus and there have been a million viruses just another one and some people are going to die and whatever we're going to move on that's there's that school of thought and then there's a school of thought of no this one is different this we are in a different time all of the things that we were doing ahead of time with the flu and everything else we were we just weren't thinking about it correctly this is the correct way to live now we have to not shake hands and be close to each other because we're going to get each other sick. And it seems like those two sides, there's, there, there, it's almost like there's no room for a middle. And it's interesting how I don't think that those two sides fall along party lines. No, I mean, I but th- that's, that's a good it's, – it's a microcosm of American politics, right? Like who, right. who's in the middle these days? Most of us, but there's nowhere right. for us to go hang out. Right. There's no like right. there's no fucking version of MSNBC or Fox News or CNN for people who – are right. ambivalent to most of this stuff. Or, like, I like guns and I like weed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where's my spot? Yeah, well, your spot's probably in uh, Compton. But uh, <laughs> just, uh, that's C-O-M-P-T-O-N is where I go for you. But uh, t- to your point, like, uh, yeah. I-, I, think, I think you're right. And I think this, it- it's going to change a lot of people. I have seen it-, it change people just in my neighborhood and at grocery stores and things like that. I went, there was a, a friend I hadn't seen in a while, and like, I'm, I hug people and I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? You know? And they were right. like, hey, we're going the six feet Easy. or whatever. And it was just like, are we still doing that? Like, you know, are, are, and how long <laughs> is that going to continue for? Because I see, and I've seen this forever living in LA, especially at LAX, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of international flights come in, typically from Asia. Half of them are wearing masks before this happened, right? Right. Because of, of what's whatever's going on in their country, pollution or, or whatever right. viruses they're afraid of getting. AIDS. Y- yeah, exactly. I don't want people in our country now wearing masks in the street, becoming impersonal, not hand sh- doing handshakes for meetings, not hugging one another. I don't want that for our society. Therefore, I'm going to try to make the extra effort to go out of my right. way now to do those types of things. But I'm right. curious as to how, how many people won't do that back to me. Yeah, my my uh, sort of philosophical inquiry 
to myself is I say, gosh, I'm a, you know, I'm a guy that likes to visit people in person. Mm -hmm. I like to make the effort. I like to shake hands, look people in the eye, you know, speak confidently. And now you're like, well, if you travel to go see someone, are you being inconsiderate to them? Cause you're not sure if they're freaked out by the fact that you're on a plane. I mean, I don't know how this plays out eight or nine months from now. Um, well, psycho- you know, psychology is contagious too. So I think you're, what you're doing is probably good for people. Like, uh, yes, a lot of people have been on Trump's ass the last couple of days for trying to downplay or rush back to normalcy and shit like that. Like his job is to keep the country calm mm-hmm. when he's on yeah. camera. That's his job. So shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Like it's, that's the whole point of that. Like, well, you're making it sound like it's not as big a deal. Like, what do you mean to come out here? Everybody's fucking dying, man. Yeah, yeah, like, you can't you know, have that either. Flip the podium over and fucking run away. Slap Pence in the face. That, fuck you. I, yeah. Like, that's what I can't on, believe man. is that they, it, what I can't believe in terms of the way that people are reporting on this is they're like, well, Trump, isn't being transparent enough and then he comes out and he says everything he knows that day well here's what i know and then the next day he's like i got new information here's what i know they're like but you didn't say that yesterday i was like well hey. i didn't know yesterday yeah and, th- and this is the uh, one I thing like whenever i read or hear something politically about this of like you know biden would have done something different trump would have done something different obama would have done something different we've never been faced with this in the history of no. our nation we don't know how anyone would react to it except for the person that is currently in the White House right now. And and even then, we're not going to be able, history tells us, we're not going to be able to judge whether or not it was correct or incorrect probably for another 10 years on something like this Uh, when a major event (laughs) happens. So I have no opinion on it either way. I think any president uh, is like Trump. I think he's doing the best that he possibly can. But when you don't know, you don't know. Otherwise, there would be hard dates for when sports is going to come back, schools are going to come back, and uh, your kids are able to go back yeah. to to a normal life. We don't have no, we don't have dates on any of it. You're in Virginia. I just read that that it was June tenth, and it altered my mind. I mean, right. there was a part of me that died when I read that article. Where I'm looking at the calendar, it's March thirty first, man. First. That's yeah. another two and a half months on top of this. Yeah, uh, it's it's crazy. You know what, what's interesting about the Trump of it all is you know. There are a lot of people who do not like Donald Trump. They distrust him. They think that he's, you know, very self-centered and he's only doing stuff to benefit himself. So that that's sort of the anti-Trump view. Mm-hmm. There is a zero percent chance he's sitting in the White House right now, going, "God, how am I going to benefit from yeah. this?" Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny you say that. CN, like, CNN ran an article the other day on their front page, and the uh, the headline was. Uh, hotel resorts like Trump's benefit get millions from bailout, and then in the story it's like, well, they're not actually eligible for it. Right. Like Trump, yeah. no federally yeah. elected employee of any kind, president, Congress, Senate, none of that are eligible for anything in the bailout. But hotel Trump, hotel chains like Trump's, L- like will yeah, be yeah, yeah. like yeah. like he's got like there's this cabal of fucking hotel chain owners, and Trump became president just so he could make them a couple extra bucks. And he did it in a time where it's a massive bailout. Yeah, you know that situation. It's not like this is. I, I guarantee you, fucking dum dums out there, this is not good for the hotel industry. <laughs> yeah, if you've been, if <laughs> really? you didn't already know that. Speaking of fucking dummies, uh, Chris Cuomo has coronavirus. He does. Uh, from CNN, Chris well, Cuomo has uh, coronavirus. He said hey. he's not going to miss a show. He's going to do it from his basement. Couldn't have happened to a better guy. I know. Uh, you know hey, why he's doing I, the show from I, his uh, basement? So his brother can go on every single night from New York. Yeah. Exactly. You want? I, I'm. Uh, I don't know if you checked uh, Kickstarter today, but I'm thinking about starting up an airline. <laughs> I figured, like, <laughs> I figured, you know, it's probably a good time. You know, yeah. lots of people are just, you know, jonesing to get on a plane. It's funny. So. Fifteen minutes before we, you, you and I hopped on, uh, my wife was scheduled. Our kids are on spring break next week. Right. They were supposed to be. Uh, turns out they're on eternal spring break. That's and, right. And uh, I called American Airlines. First time I've gotten through in two minutes, yeah. nobody was there, and they were like, hey, would you like to cancel on a full refund? Yes, yes, I would. Yeah. Didn't get any fights on it whatsoever, <laughs> and you know, they were like, great, sir, thanks thanks a lot, and that's that's it. Yeah. Have a I, nice day. The I friendliest get the idea. experience I ever had in my life. I get the idea. Let's say banks or airlines or the real estate industry or somebody did something fucked up and lost a bunch of money because of it. Probably shouldn't bail them out. Right, right, right. But if a fucking pandemic, global pandemic happens, and we're talking about millions of jobs, yeah, 
then maybe you consider it. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're billionaires, motherfucker. They own huge companies. Yeah. That's how it works. That's, that's what's going to happen. Like, just relax, nice. motherfucker. I don't, I, don't mind, I, uh, I don't mind the debate going on that more money should be going into individual people's hands. I'm fine with that. But don't, like, try to demonize the owners of airlines because of that. Yeah. It's great. They want their $1,200 checks, too, you know? <laughs> exactly. How has yeah, this I, I, how has this affected but, your life, by the way? Because um, you're look, you're a sports guy. That's what you do for a living. Where listen, I'm a I'm a sports guy. I'm also I'll tell you what I'm very 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 blessed to be working with Killcliff mm -hmm. because Killcliff is awesome. And I've been actually in this time I've been doing a lot of work with them. Yeah, you know, they they have such an amazing product that I can get behind wholeheartedly. So. Same. You know, Kill Cliff. We, yeah, we've we've been look, we did a a movie with them, uh, Range Fifteen, about uh yeah. four years ago. I, I wrote and directed and those guys because we I dealt with all the sponsors, I produced it as well behind the scenes. Easiest to work with in the business, couldn't have been more affable and helpful all the time. So when they had the new C B D product and they hit us up, we were like, Yo, I we're all in. Just send me a can. Like we'll we'll try it. I'm sure it's just as great as the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was and they're they're one of the easiest best brands to work with on the planet. We on the planet. Yeah, Dan and, and I can attest and, to this. We've had some that are difficult. Yeah, Killcliff's one of the top. Yeah, they're the best. What's crazy is I've had every drink company, like a sports drink company, whether it was Gatorade or Powerade or all the big players, come to me, and I'm like, I can't, I I can't drink the high fructose corn yeah, syrup. Me neither. Yeah. Like every stuff, can has like 30 it. grams of fucking sugar in it. Or 38 in some yeah. cases. Like in, in a Gatorade, I think it's 38 grams of sugar mm -hmm. in a Gatorade. Yeah. Like, yeah I'm good, man. It's crazy. Literally, it, I, I love being involved with Killcliff because it, became, it, it, it came about so organically where I find this drink and I'm like, oh, my God. It's, you know, nothing fake, nothing artificial, sugar-free, doesn't, you know, tastes amazing. And I'm like, the CBD product is just off the chains. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, I'm really, really, really blessed to be working with a product that I really believe in because I've been very fortunate enough to be able to pick and choose, you know, the companies that uh, I can really support and they're unbelievable. So, so that's how really, you met them. You ran across their product in the wild. Yeah. Wait, really? Literally a friend of mine brought a friend of mine brought me, it was just like anything else. They're like, Hey, have you ever tried kill cliff? I'm like, no, nah, I never heard of it. Mm -hmm. So I tried it. I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And then, uh, you know, we, we, I literally sat down and said, you know, how can I get involved in, you know, support the brand? Because, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I became their first brand, um, you know, their first chief brand officer. Uh, to really, I, I mean, honestly, when I say like I believe in it, I'm a guy that, like, only only supports things that I can get a hundred percent behind. Sure. And uh, you know, this product is a it's something your you know your kids can drink it. You know, whether or not it's you know the uh, whether or not it's recover or ignite. Mm -hmm. You know, the CBD drink that I have that is awesome. I That's, mean, it's just it's amazing. And 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 you know, I think it not only does it have a really really bright future. It's an you know all American product. You know, founded by Navy SEALs. You know. Made in America. It's, yeah. You know, we, we like to say uh, Kill Cliff, the definition, 100% winning in American. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, dude, I, I I use my own promo code because I buy the shit. Like, I don't just ask for free shit. I right. hate doing that. I like to support the companies that we actually have on the show. I, right. I, but I do use my own promo code. Because, I mean, That's dude, right. I get 30%. <laughs> like, I type in Drink It Bros, and I know somebody's sitting on the Kill Cliff side going, that motherfucker, dude. Like, he doesn't have to use his own promo code. It's like, yeah, I do. I do because I want to. We drink, <laughs> we drink right. a ton of it over here. We drink a ton of it uh, over it's, here. It's um, awesome. Where, where can everybody find you on social media? Social media, I'm active on Twitter at John Brinkus underscore. And you can go to all the Kill, Kill Cliff has Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. But I'm mostly on Twitter at John Brinkus underscore. Where, where it's, uh, I'm surprised you don't have a podcast. Um, any thought of doing that in the future? I, and if so, so we would love to have you on Drinking Bros Sports because uh, everybody's absolutely. been asking us to expand this show for a long time. Um, yeah. it, it, it just so happens, uh, you know, as we were about to, the entire sports world shut down. But uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Where you I, have a, uh, I, had a, I had a podcast called Brink of Midnight, and we actually are relaunching it on KillCliff.com. Uh, Brink of Midnight, we, I did it for 100 episodes, and it was all about the moments in life when everything changes. And, you know, everybody from Ray Lewis to Rob Riggle to Dr. Oz to Dr. Drew to Damon John, Larry Fitzgerald, you know, lots mm. of just, uh, you know, people who have been very blessed to become friends with over mm. the years. Sure. And it's just getting all their turning points. And, you know, now that we as a country and that are at that turning point, 
um, you know, they're more relevant than ever. But, mm -hmm. you know, I ran it 100 episodes and I actually, uh, you know, had just, you know, it, things were just too crazy and too busy. So yeah. I parked it for 100 episodes and now, now we're going to bring it back. And, you know, I'll certainly go on to, to create more content because, you know, people need hope and, yeah. you know, need to need to hear how others have, you know, overcome. I think we should bring back some classics and ask them what their real turning, like uh, Tanya Harding, for example. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> at what point during that whole process did it really turn the corner for because there was a while there's a gap where she thought she was gonna succeed in her whole scheme right? yeah and win the gold medal yeah, yeah. But totally. i want to I hear about finding out that it all was fucked up that's what i want to hear about well according it, to the movie she didn't know but you know at yeah. some point she knew though right yeah. she found out later so it's like, later yeah 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 allegedly wait yeah. When you, you say according to the movie she didn't know that galuli was gonna go fucking smash homeboy's knee no apparently the boyfriend according to the movie and again it was a great movie right. if you haven't seen it I, I tanya it was awesome it was, it was it actually awesome it was nominated for an oscar um so was margot robbie but uh it was one of those things where she in the movie mm -hmm. the boyfriend had come home she had seen it on the news and was just like what have you done Blah blah blah, and then she went and yelled at him, and it was the friend of the boyfriend. Uh, mm. But you know, if you're going to tell me she didn't know anything about it, that's crazy. I, I have an important question for you guys. Mm -hmm. Are you playing NBA 2K? I do. Yeah. He uh, does. Who, yeah. Who, who do you uh, who do you take if you play blacktop and you have four to pick? This is a very important question for us culturally. Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, I start out any group with Kevin Durant because I think he's the best I, I think physically he's the best NBA yep. player that's ever existed I don't know if he's got if he had the drive of Michael Jordan for example he never would have mm -hmm. he would be like LeBron James just like finals right. after finals after finals I don't think okay. any, I don't think anybody physically has ever been anywhere close to him um, all right so you're taking Kevin Durant in 2k who else who are your other three if we're playing blacktop in uh 2k oh man um Steph Curry I've got, I've got I probably take Clay Steph and LeBron and uh, Durant. Yeah. So what's interesting is I, I've got my little magic formula. It seems to be working. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I'm playing my son and my uh, my nephew. So <laughs> 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 they, uh, but, I, you know, you got to go with AI. If you look at uh, the NBA 2K ratings for mm -hmm. AI, he's uh, the yeah, fastest yeah. player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, good, yeah. it's amazing. And four on four, you got to yeah. take Yao Ming. For whatever reason, man, they <laughs> rate that guy. He can't miss from eight feet and in. Like, you get it to Yao Ming. He's just got it going on all the time. He then was on, he was uh, okay in real life. I mean, he wasn't you know he, all world. He wasn't terrible. I mean, he was. But look, dude, he he could he certainly could miss. You get Yao Ming in two K, he can't miss. Yeah, like you, you can hit you can hit square, triangle, trigger, and it makes it. Doesn't matter. I haven't so tried any of the older players. Is Bird on there? Because Bird on two K, I haven't played this year's yet. I mean, I've played the game, but I haven't played the blacktop much. Is Bird in there, Larry Bird? Bird, yeah, Bird is in there because he's you, usually you one of those guys who can't miss. Like anywhere yeah, on the court, he's like, he just launches yeah, shit up. Exactly, like wherever you're, you're, you're getting it. It's, yeah. uh, it's pretty amazing. Clay is is an amazing two K player. Um, he's actually not rated as high as Steph, but for some reason, mm -hmm. I make more with Clay than with Steph. He's the um, he might be the streakiest shooter that we've ever seen. That's a like right. a, a volume like high quality shooter. I've never seen it like thirty seven points in a quarter. It says what it like. That's all you need to really hear. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of points. Exactly, but. Uh, I've never seen even Steph. I've never seen anybody get as hot as Clay gets. Right. The on, other on the, court. Uh, the other two K player that I really like that a lot of people aren't picking is the Dream. I take Hakeem and ah. the dude. Dude just is unbelievable. He was unreal. He he. When we're talking about the Mount Rushmore of of the NBA, he never gets mentioned. No. But you got to remember how amazing he was. Yeah. Like, imagine had, imagine him in today's game. He would be shooting threes, and he'd probably be shooting in the low 40%. He would have like, to totally. shoot threes. Yeah. Like it, like, he, it's he, almost he, mandatory now that seven-footers are shooting threes yeah. because yeah. of Dirk and those guys. The way that guy moved and his ability to pass out of the high post in today's game, he would be fucking even better he, than he was back then. He wouldn't be getting banged around as much as he was back then. No. But if you look at him and you think about you know sort of like the shake and the dream – like. You look at Kevin Durant, and you're like, they're kind of interchangeable players. They'd Kev be the same player, yeah, different eras. Yeah, Kevin yeah. Durant is probably a little more athletic just because he's Potentially, not. Potentially. But yeah. like a little bit, he, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, he's. He, the he, dream just didn't, he didn't have to be that athletic, right? No, no. If, no. He, if he had to, like Durant, I, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah he's great. I, I like how we're, we're, we've been relegated to discussing video games amongst our children right. as far as sports goes on a sports show now. 
Well, is there well, going to be is, yeah, an NFL? It's depressing, isn't is it? there going to be a, or a, I'm sorry, a college basketball or college football video game ever? Ever? Ooh. Like now, now that they're talking about allowing players to profit off of yeah, their fucking own image, that yeah. was the fucking thing that was holding it up, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was. Ah, man, I know basketball is their big one. So the 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 basketball video game is the biggest one for those guys. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about. When's the last time there was a college football video game? It's been a while, and college football is way more popular than college basketball is. I, yeah. I have, a, I have a question. Yeah. And this is a good question. Just popped in my mind. So if college, if universities just say, hey, we're shut down, we're no, we are not, like, we're, you're going to do online learning. Mm-hmm. And if you're a basketball <laughs> player, are you allowed to stream yourself live and take donations mm-hmm. while you're hitting free throws? Or is that does that break NCAA regulations? I mean, well now, what right does now, the regulations it, say it says you can profit off your image now, right? Yeah, well, there, there was a kid who was uh, a kicker for uh, NCAA a college college kicker, and he had he had a big YouTube channel, and it was monetized, and they threw him out of the NCAA because he was monetizing yep. a YouTube channel. So I, I would have to say no, probably you couldn't do that. You wouldn't be allowed to do that. I feel like I, they need to make well, a move though. They need to tell these kids that they can make money however they need to yeah well so so that's what makes it what's interesting about that is you could you make money straight could you make money just playing nba 2k on twitch yes and, absolutely you know, yes yes you can yeah, yeah. Right? but but i mean you can in real life could you according Which, to the ncaa probably not yeah. i mean think about how much money a guy like trevor lawrence could make if he was just playing college football on Xbox or PlayStation. Or oh, streaming. dude, any of them. Like, and, I mean, why, and why? who's that hurting, by the way? No, no one. But everybody would be lining up to play your favorite player and yeah. be like, great. Totally. Let's go one-on-one and figure this college out. College football, a, a, a game, a PlayStation, Xbox game for college football should absolutely exist. It's, it's silly that it doesn't. I mean, if you want to argue about the rules and all this bullshit, just use part of the profit instead of paying the kids directly, just pay for something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like more the the, co- the schools that opt in get more scholarships or something, and it's offset by that money. Who yeah. knows? More kids get to go to school. Blah blah blah. Here we are. Yeah. Give us the fucking game, asshole. <laughs> like I'm. I feel like now I'm really angry. You know how you get to the end of your life um, when you've uh, taken a bunch of Xanax and you're sitting in a warm bathtub and uh, just waiting for your body to die. Sure. You're regretting the things. <laughs> Relax, John. (laughs) You're waiting for, uh, or you're thinking about all the shit you didn't do in your life. Right now, I'm angry at all the people who didn't make content for me to, to absorb. I need it now. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Fucked up. Yeah, you fucked up by not having college baseball is okay. Yeah, but basketball and football should definitely exist as a video game. And the fact that it doesn't right now, I feel like it's un-American. Yeah, maybe. Wow. Maybe. Look, I I think about girls I didn't fuck from like 2009, where I was just like, eh. Made the wrong move that night. I went after a friend, <laughs> and that was the wrong <laughs> move that night. And I'm like, wow. you know, like things could have got wild. Like I could have gotten choked. Like things like that, where it's just like, God damn it, I missed out on that. You, You're thinking about dude, this quarantine. Yeah, this quarantine is just it's messing with you already. Oh, it's dude. It's, we're early. We're we're in the first quarter, guys. I, I've do. <laughs> it's early. We're not. <laughs> we're only seven minutes into the first quarter, man. Yeah, we're only seven minutes in, and you're call like you're already calling a timeout, saying, "Oh my god!" I mean, I, we got to save those. I I was shedding tears for Kenny Rogers' death last Saturday. You know what I'm saying? So, I just I know where it's going. I've been deployed, and I've been without a shower for 45 days. Yeah, for example. Well, and I've been in very right. uh, shitty situation for a very extended period of time, and I know where it's going. And what do you think that where is? Where is it going? I, I hear where it's going is that the average person can't handle it. Yeah, like there's no until way. So what happens? I agree. Yeah. Well, until it happens. So what yeah. happens? So, so so what happens is uh, people start losing their fucking minds. Yeah. People start doing shit that they wouldn't normally do. Yep. For example, mm-hmm. like anything to stave off boredom, and I think honestly that's what life is in general. Yeah. Because we're figuring out. If you're smart enough, you figured out that there's no point to any of this, uh, or or it's some kind of simulation. In either case, you don't have any agency. Not that matters anyway. So we're all trying to fucking distract ourselves until our bodies die, and we try to find noble ways to distract ourselves. I'm gonna have a family, or I'm gonna do charity. You're like fuck all that shit, dude. At the end of the day, when people become desperate, that's where you see their true personality, and I like that. <laughs> Wow, dude, we gotta make we gotta make a like an inspirational poster. 
life is just a series of events to stave off boredom. I think it's the opposite of Pinterest. It's called Death Trist, and it's just <laughs> horrifically Horrific. awful quotes by Dan yeah. that make you want to off yourself. No, it's, it's yeah. very like, liberating to know that none of this matters, though. Yeah. It Dude, is. The fact that you used the word stave very confidently. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't run into anybody else using that using that verb. Are you are you a conspiracy guy, Brangus? Yes, he is. Dude, I am deep, deep into conspiracy land. I uh, will you, you know, come back and do a science. show just all about conspiracies that is non sports with us? Because I, I heard I this will, rumor yep. and I was like, is that true? I'm going to ask him on air. Let me tell you this: go to conspiracytruthfinders.com. It's a new site that I've found. Okay. Has some really cool stuff on it. But I will tell you what, I'm the reason why I'm so deep into conspiracy land, and believe me, I'm not a conspiracy believer, but I've I'm educated in the conspiracy space because I had to produce a bunch of TV shows along with sports science. Mm -hmm. I did a ton of shows for sci-fi. One of my favorite was called Fact or Faked Paranormal Files that ran <laughs> for like four seasons. Yeah. Um, and it was investigating all the famous footage that you've seen and all the cell phone videos and all the YouTube videos and uh, really putting them to sort of the scientific test of, is it a ghost? Is it a UFO? Is it a monster? So I've, I've educated myself on all of this stuff and I can go deep. Oh man, you got to come deep. back then and do just a, a complete conspiracy episode. Oh. We won't talk one lick of sports. No. Dan no. will be, uh, yeah, Dan will be higher than, a, uh, than Travis right before he pulled the trigger in Tiger King. Yeah, he was high. Dude. Oh boy. So yeah, let's, let's, let's have you back. Let's do a conspiracy show. I'd love to. Absolutely. It'd be great. Before we go right quick, what's your, uh, what's your favorite that you think is true? Yeah, what's your favorite conspiracy, oh, conspiracy that you think theory? is true? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, you know, you know, it's it, it's tough because it's tough. I'm going to save that for the conspiracy show. <laughs> okay. Because there are too many caveats that I have to put. Because <laughs> I do, I, I, when I tell you I've I've gone deep on it. I mean, I go deep, so I got to give you all the background and the look. Here's what I mean by that. Most this is all that I will say. This sure. is all that I will say. This is this is just true. This is this is a fact. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. This official story that you are delivered, no matter from what organization it is, doesn't just pick an organization. Yep. An event happens, the official story comes out. That story almost never stands. Mm -hmm. It changes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. So there are many, many stories. We all know that Pearl Harbor, as an example, was Pearl Harbor a conspiracy? Or did we, is it something that, well, we turned, turned out that we kind of knew it was going to happen. We didn't know the day, the time, the place, the whatever, but we, we needed some excuse to enter the war. Like a lot of people would be like, that's conspiracy. It's like, no, that's, that it's the truth that we knew something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of events like that, where if you qualify it appropriately, it's not a nutbag conspiracy mm -hmm. theory, but it's just, <laughs> look, the official story wasn't telling you the whole truth. It kind of evolved over time. Man, I yes. there's a lot of that. I, we're well, gonna, you know what didn't? We're you know what sit him down. You know what didn't evolve over time is all of us because the Earth was created five thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's the. I'm just kidding. That's nonsense, <laughs> uh, <laughs> dude. You know, it's a, dude. If you go to the flat, did you guys know? Look this up. Here's a great conspiracy. Look this up. Yeah. YouTube changed the algorithm on conspiracy theories oh really yes i yeah, I, I read that and <laughs> it's true uh there was another one Is where it like a fake news thing they're trying to prevent fake news or something yeah so if, yes if you type in yep. yeah some of the best conspiracy videos that are out there you know that are kind of having these alternative theories you could barely find them because they're buried yes and i i won't get too deep into this we'll save it for the show but on on my other show ross patterson revolution when the vegas shooting happened and they didn't release any of the footage from inside the right. casino of this of, of the guy bringing in the guns, which they did later, right? I posed the question of whether or not it was a conspiracy. Um, and at the time, <clears throat> I thought it was, and I was incorrect on that, right? About, because we, we do audio and video on, on that show as well. About a year later, they took down the video, and I got a uh, notice from YouTube that said, what you're saying <laughs> is, is considered a conspiracy, and we have proven fact that what you're saying is a conspiracy and we don't let right. you promote conspiracy or uh, thought-provoking things along those lines. 
and they ripped the video uh, fr from the, the channel and, and I got some form of warning or whatever from it. And uh, I, I had to press a button that said, do you agree with us or not? And it was just like, <laughs> shit. Now I'm kind of stuck where it's like, yeah. And later on, like I, I changed my tune once I saw the footage release. But, um, you know, I'd pose, I just posed the question to the audience. And they went, right. they went back through, deleted the video, and then make me agree with these are stated facts and you were incorrectly twisting these facts to, to form your own conspiracy. And I was like, why can't we do that with the media? That's what I say. Why can't, yeah, why mean, can't we police CNN's website? Or, or New York Times. Or New York or, Times yeah. or Fox or Washington Post or any of these assholes. Can't? Yeah. I, but YouTube it's crazy. can. I mean, think of it. Yeah, the YouTube. Like, think about the – I mean, what? where do you draw the line between – just dis you know civil disagreement and conspiracy mm. yeah yeah man I mean, it's it's crazy you just don't agree with what happened maybe you think there's an alternative theory you know it's like it's crazy so it's dude i can go i will go all day and go deep on it because i do think i tend to i tend to believe that there is there are so many different ways of phrasing things that it does you don't have to be a nutbag conspiracy theorist. No, to not be at all. Correct, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. To be like, you know what? I just don't think it's the whole story. Yeah, or or listening. Like we've had Alex Jones on this show twice. Um and yep. you know, look, I don't agree with everything Alex Jones says, obviously, but I'll sit and have a conversation about it and and hear you out. I mean, Dan just flat out just said no. You're incorrect mm -hmm. on something. And yeah. uh but it's fun to have these conversations and debate. Because at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Will we ever get the real answers? Probably not. But it's a blast. Probably not. And, and since yeah. you have a lot of time off, we would love to yes. have you back on and do a full conspiracy show. So I'm, I'm in, dude. I, I can't do it fast enough. Let's just roll right into it because I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Maybe Friday. I, look, we could, yeah. Friday. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm Wait, down. Let me, check. let me see if I'm booked. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, I'm free. <laughs> I'll be in Virginia until June 10th. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's do a Friday afternoon. I'm down. That'd be okay. a blast. Yeah. That'd be a blast. We'll, we'll put out. Awesome. Uh, do you want to do one where the listeners can call in and shit? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We can do one where the listeners can call in. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, dude. Cause we, we've had some crazy <laughs> ones on here because we've done a few of those on Drinking Bros and they're always off the reservation. Here, they're great. And and here's the uh, here's what's interesting is you know having when I tell you I've seen, I, I mean I've literally seen every possible video, every possible paranormal video, ghosts, goblins, UFOs, whatever. Working on a you know a uh, paranormal show will do no nothing to further your belief in the paranormal. Oh, every I bet. Every time that you're like, oh man, there's Here's a ghost video. Well, gee, I wonder what it is. And then you look under the hood. You're like, it's CGI or it's, you know, a light flare mm -hmm. or it's a whatever. Right. Like when you can uncover it all, uh, it's it's funny. Like I, I could listen in th this. is what it, Here's a, a good teaser for the uh, conspiracy show. The whole idea about a UFO is, you know, sounds very Buck Rogersy, right? Like green men flying around in a tin can. I would I would be quicker to accept the idea of a wormhole. Right, that mm -hmm. there's something we can't understand. Yeah. It's beyond our comprehension. The universe can fold in half, and you can fly across it. Like something crazy. I'd believe that before. Oh, there's a little green man who traveled a trillion light years and forgot to turn his lights off. <laughs> <laughs> so that, oh, we're gonna a, get into it. I can't wait. I cannot Love wait. It. Uh, John Brankis, thanks for being with us. I'm not kidding. We're we're gonna call you afterwards and set this up for Friday. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, awesome. I appreciate you being on the show for John, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone. Cool. How awesome is that? Oh, yeah. dude, it's great. I, dude, yeah. Hey, come. I'm dead serious. You want to do Friday afternoon? Friday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Same time, 2 Let's do it. We'll do 2 30 on Friday. Here, you just got to promise me that you're not going to puss out on any of these things. Oh, we don't. No, shit. dude. Well, don't we, puss a, out on them. Do you see this? This? this is a fucking signed OJ Simpson. We got a signed right OJ Simpson jersey behind right. Dan. So. Relax, guy. Yeah, we're there, good. There are some awesome. I mean, when when we go deep into, I, I actually should send you some episodes of things like the moon landing. When I lay out for you, go to this website. Yeah, yeah. Site, look at this article. Look at this shit. Like it'll blow your mind of like what, what you can actually say. Because the answer is we went to the moon. Okay, we went to the moon. The question is, is any of the footage fake? Any of it? Yeah. And 
when you look at, you can Google, actually Google changed its algorithm too, but look up, there's an awesome NPR article about all of the original Apollo 11 footage yep. has been lost. That's Man, true. I Look, you know behind me, I've got a signed picture of uh, Buzz Aldrin on the moon. Right. You know that, right? So yeah. I, I'm all in on this. Let's do 2.30 on Friday. 2.30 uh, Friday. And, and we'll go fucking deep into it. Go, go deep, and, and I'll tell you what. We'll give people lots to think about. I will. There's so, so much to think about and without being a nutbag. <laughs> For sure. I'm down, awesome. dude. All right, I'll talk to you on awesome. Friday, 2.30. All right. All right God bye, bless, buddy. guys. Thanks See so much.